Since the dawn of time, man has been curious. And for almost as long, the Vibes Broadcast Network has sought the truth. Investigate. Discuss. Explore. Okay. Maybe in other episodes, but this one is just... Listen to the Vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I have here Mr. Jimmy Starr, and he is a publicist, a director, podcaster, influencer, all around, all around awesome person. And, Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we're going to get to know him and have a great conversation. So let's kick this off. Just tell us a little bit about you. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Jimmy Starr. By the way, thank you for having me on your show. I'm oh, excited to be my here. My pleasure. My um, pleasure. I'm basically like the king of everything indie. Um, so I do everything. I produce indie films. I act in them, but I really suck. So I don't really usually promote that part. Um, I uh, produce films. I'm a publicist. Uh, I have a show called The Jimmy Starr Show with Ron Russell. And it's a pretty popular, we call it a web show because it's a uh, radio television Um and, and it goes everywhere and, and it's pretty popular. And uh, I'm an influencer in social media. I have a big following in social media. And I basically, I'm kind of like a jack of all trades of everything, as long as it's in the entertainment industry. Okay. So, so how does one become an influencer? Cause I've, I've heard that term and I, I still, I mean, I don't understand all that stuff. So an influencer basically is someone who has a big following actually. <laughs> If you have a big following, you're an influencer where, where you post things and stuff and people pay attention. You know, sometimes you create trends, you create changes, uh, but mostly it has to do with the fact with having a big following. And, and I have a, a pretty good following on like Twitter and Instagram and, and Facebook. Uh, and so, and I'm on Getter. So like I have like, I'm on four platforms. Oh, and TikTok. I just joined TikTok. Oh, okay. Uh, so, um, so I get a lot of plays on a lot of those different platforms and I had another Instagram that got hacked about eight months ago. And like, I used to post my show on Instagram and I had about a hundred million plays of my show just on Instagram before it got hacked. Jeez. <laughs> um, I, I just got on Getter a couple months ago and I mean, I'm starting to pick up a few more followers on there, but I haven't quite got there yet. You know, I'm not, I don't even think I've hit 50 on there, but I'm, I'm getting there. I have, uh, I think 310,000. Wow. <laughs> okay yeah I, I need to be friends with you <laughs> follow me i'll follow you back <laughs> and, i like it though because i i get everything you know i use social media everybody else uses it to play but for me it's a business tool you mm -hmm. know i find clients for my publicity firm called world star pr there um i find guests for my show like you, you know you found someone introduced me to you to come on your show so i i usually reach out to all the famous people on social media to get them on my show and uh, I find movie projects. I find people to invest in movies. I do everything through social media. So I spend a lot of time doing it all the time. I probably spend five hours a day on social media. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, I, I have all those and I'll, you know, I mostly just post for the show. Uh, every once in a while, I'll get on to find, see if I can find somebody to come on the show. But uh, I, I just I ain't figured out all that algorithm stuff and what have you. Uh, TikTok, I I started it a couple of months ago as well, and I just take clips from my show and post it on there. Uh, I've got a pretty good following on there. Not, nothing like you, but <laughs> my TikTok following isn't all that good. I think it's about seven thousand people, maybe or eight thousand people. It's not so good, but. But uh, my videos get a lot of uh, hits, but I might, I don't get a lot of likes though. I only have like 20,000 likes on it. So I don't know how you, how it like, like works out. So I haven't really figured TikTok out. I'm kind of old for the TikTok age, even though I see a lot of older people on there, but you know, TikTok's really, for, cause I, I have a bum knee. It's not like I'm going to go and make like dancing videos <laughs> and stuff like that. I don't have time, you know, for any of that. So I usually just find stuff that's funny or put pictures up and create music you know, mm -hmm. for it or, or stuff like that. But, um, I haven't really got TikTok figured out and I don't have any of the algorithms figured out. I can't even, uh, I, I don't really, even though I'm an influencer, I don't really comprehend it. I mean, I have, I have posts on Instagram that have 50 and 60,000 likes on them. And I have posts that have a hundred likes. So I don't understand how it works. 
So uh, I really like, uh, you know, unless they just don't, didn't like the things that I posted so much that they only gave it a hundred likes, but you know, cause I probably average four or 5,000 likes normally on a picture. Jeez. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to get 50. <laughs> I mean, I have some videos on there. I have videos with 10,000 views and then like my new year's Eve video got 500,000 views. I did a video on new year's Eve. So I really don't know how to like figure the algorithms and all that stuff out. Sometimes I do really good and sometimes I don't, but I just post whenever I don't, I don't pick a time of day and say, I got to post everything now when it pops in my head, I like post it. So it is, if it goes good, it goes good. If it doesn't, I don't really worry about it. You know, yeah. it helps though in getting guests. If you have a big social media following, you know, I, I find to get bigger, you know, I'm always looking to, you know, I get a lot of, b plus a minus guest but i only had a handful of like really like a plus guests and so i'm really working on trying to get the like you know the charlie's theorons and the you know and the, the pe people of that caliber and so that's really where i'm trying to go we'll see how if, if i get there or not who knows it's all in having fun though while you're you're going oh yeah well you, we'll get there we'll get there i know we will i mean my mind keeps getting better and better and better all the time and and uh, I'm, i meet some wonderful people trying to spread some positivity out there um but uh i wanted to know how in the world did you get into the entertainment business in the first place you know um well as a kid i lived in south florida and so like i was an extra in everything as a kid so i was in all kinds of uh, especially if it was shot in Florida, anything that was shot in Florida. My dad worked for the airlines, so I used to fly for free so I could like go and be in things because it didn't cost anything really. And uh, so I was in a whole bunch of stuff like Miami Vice, the TV series and all that kind of stuff, like because I live there, mm -hmm. you know, it was easy. They have agencies that book you as an extra, you know, and you get paid a hundred dollars a day or whatever, and you go and do it. So I did all of that. And then I thought I would try my hand at being an actor. And, and I, I really, it was because I was watching Who's the guy from CSI Miami with the red hair? I forgot his name. Oh my God. Oh, I know who you're talking about, and I can't David, think of his uh, name. Uh, I forgot his name. Anyway, the guy with the red hair from CSI Miami, the star of CSI Miami, whatever his name is. Like, I was like watching the two different series that he's in, and I was like, you know, he's the same in every single thing he does. You know, and he gets people hired him. I said, it can't be that hard to be an actor. And so I booked my first 11 auditions. And, uh, and, and they were little teeny, like one or two line roles, you know, and I thought, oh, this is kind of like fun. Um, and so then I was in a bunch of films where I have a couple of lines, uh, but I'm really not really good because I've never taken an acting class. And, and then uh, I started producing things and, and uh, producer puts everything together in the film, basically. And I'm really good at casting because I know a lot of famous people and uh, I'm really good at finding locations and all that kind of stuff. So I actually prefer producing. So now I've pretty much gone into producing um, significantly more because number one, you make a lot more money, you know, as a producer than you do as an actor, especially in the indie kind of films, you know, that I, I have access to work on. Um, and so I've just started producing a lot. I've just produced, I have a TV pilot that I just finished and a horror movie I just finished. And I have a couple of new movies getting ready that we're working on now. And, uh, uh, so I like the producing things better. Wow. Uh, but I've been really in the entertainment industry. And, you know, I was a clothing designer for many years. I dressed Elton John and Madonna, and I did the <sighs> costume design for Too Fast, Too Furious. And, and so I, uh, I, I was a clothing designer for like 25 years, um, and I met a lot of people through that. And that's how I built my podcast, because I would go to conventions, like horror conventions, and I would take clothes, and I would invite the famous actors to come to my room and and try stuff on if they liked it i would give it to them and take pictures with them and then we would become friends and then they would come on my podcast and that's how my podcast built really quickly at the beginning because it wasn't even called a podcast when i started so i've been on the air for 15 years so they didn't have the term podcast uh, when i started and i would have like malcolm mcdowell and lance Hendrickson and all these really big people on my show right off the bat because i met him at a convention and so uh, my show really shot up really quickly because of that. Oh, my gosh. Has, has there ever been times where you've gotten discouraged? Um, not really. You know, like I would like to make more money with my podcast. Mm -hmm. My podcast is popular. It's very hard to get sponsors. Also, though, my show is not politically correct, actually, a lot of the times. Uh, and so it's harder to get sponsors because we don't. You know, we say whatever we want to say, and sometimes it offends people. And uh, we still do, you know, talk about boobs and penises and stuff. Like we just talk about all the stuff you're not supposed to talk about, and uh, uh, and the people love it. Like we just broke a billion downloads, so people love it. But 
but uh, but I think people who would sponsor me are probably a little afraid of it. Yeah, the, <laughs> the way things work, especially like dealing with a platform like YouTube, you have to be really careful what you say, and you know they're quick to cancel you if you say the wrong thing, and yeah, so, yeah, that's that's something else. I don't really ask a lot of people, but do you deal with cancel culture? Um, no, we don't really deal with it. Um, I mean, I don't, not on purpose, but every once in a while it just comes up. Yeah. You know, you know the, the whole thing, the whole, which you can't even say it because I don't know where you're going to put this, but the whole thing about having to wear masks and all the whole thing with the, 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 the disease that has been going on, we, we made some comments about it and, and actually got kicked off of YouTube. Like the station I was on got kicked off of YouTube for a week because, mm -hmm. uh, because they mentioned the word, which why I'm not saying it now, but everybody knows what I'm talking about. We just mentioned the word and uh and they got kicked off so i uh, you know it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> to say the least yeah. <laughs> it really is so i don't really so we don't talk too much about it but once in a while it comes out but we don't say that word though anymore because we know that it's an automatic trigger for youtube and they'll kick you off oh yeah especially if you're live so you're record uh because we're not live you uh you might not have the problem if you're not live but when you're live you definitely have a problem yeah, I have to be careful and it's it gets so annoying. This used to be a world where we wanted the freedom to say whatever we wanted to say. You had the Lenny Bruce's and George Carlin's of the world fighting to be able to say whatever they wanted to in comedy. And when you you got to that point, now it's going backwards. I don't have a problem, though. I only have problem really on YouTube, like because my show is on about 160 platforms, I think, or 170 platforms. Mm -hmm. And uh and I never have problems on any of those. And I get, and, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's I okay. Of, uh, I get a lot of I get a lot of play on um, uh, like uh, Apple Podcasts. I get mm -hmm. a lot of plays on SoundCloud and iHeartRadio. I was last year. I was like uh, top ten, top hundred shows on iHeart. I think eleven or twelve times. Um, and, uh, and 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 I don't edit my show at all. You know, so when there's mess ups or people are cursing or whatever happens, it just happens, and that's how what I that's what we post you know, <laughs> is however it is. So sometimes, you know, there's a lot of mess ups and, and, uh, you know, people get lost off of the Skype or, and, you know, people like blues and then we have dead air and Ron and I are just like talking about stuff and stuff. We just keep all that in there. However, however it actually happens is how it happens. Oh, that see, that's fun though, to have yeah. those, those accidents. Sometimes you never know that some good comes out of it that, you know, you get a, a lot of views or listens to just because it was an accident. Yeah, so it's fun and, and and you know it's you know the whole thing is the show is supposed to be fun and it's unfortunate that the world isn't quite so fun, you know as it used to be and you have to watch out with everything you say but we still you know are somewhat conscious of what we're saying but we kind of like say whatever <laughs> anyway. So do you still make clothes? No, I do not. I haven't done it for a long time. I'm thinking to eventually go back into it again because uh, I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, but it all just kind of depends because I'm kind of having a lot of fun producing movies and it's something that I like and something that I've found that I'm actually really good at. And so, uh, so right now the focus is on that and my PR business. Okay. Um, and now the, the movies, you said you worked on a horror movie. Yeah, I have a horror movie. It'll come out later this year called the beast inside. And, uh, I produced it and it's got Lorraine Landon in it. Uh, who's very well known and Vernon Wells, who's very well known. My husband, Ron, who's my co-host of my show has a cameo in it. Um, it's got a great cast and, uh, and it'll come out like later this year. It's right. being edited right now. And I have a TV pilot called the Moretti's. We shot the first episode called get her and it's uh, uh, going to be coming out in about two. Well, it'll be available in about two months, but then we're going to shop it. Oh, nice that we're going to start i have a several movies that we're getting ready to start on working oh that's got to be fun i I, fun. I got to do a, a pilot for a, a reality show i mean we only filmed for like three days they did a, the scissor reel and all that and it got shot down but it was still fun to do i know it's fun and you know just because it gets shot down one place doesn't mean it won't get that you can't there's so many outlets that you can take things to nowadays so you never know. I would never give up on it. I would keep it going. Well, I figured after seven years, it's probably dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did learn a valuable lesson doing that, though. 
Always turn your mic off before you go to the bathroom. Oh, definitely. <laughs> uh, and and what, what's like your favorite genre to work on? Um, well, I'm a big horror movie fan, so I like horror movies. I've, I've worked on a bunch of horror movies. I've been in a bunch of horror movies. Uh, and I collect memorabilia, and all my memorabilia is superheroes and horror movie stuff. Okay. So those are my, my two genres that I like a lot. You, you have to kind of share a little bit with the, what, what you have in your collection. You don't have to go through all of it, but just your, like your best pieces. Now, let's see if you can see. Hold on. Let's see. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a case. See this wooden case? Uh-huh. Where is it? Uh, uh, you can't actually see it because in between these two dolls right here, there's a tile. Mm -hmm. And the tile is an alien monster. And Lance Henriksen makes the tiles because you know, he was an alien mm -hmm. and they're, they're like ceramic tiles and he doesn't sell them. Um, but I met him and spent the weekend hanging out with him. And he actually, at the end of the weekend, gave it to me on the back of it. He wrote, you're the coolest fucker I ever met. And oh. he signed it and gave it to me and people sell them on eBay for thousands of dollars. And then right here is a pink pig. I don't know if you like ever saw saw three. Uh, yes. I've seen all of them. I saw, saw, saw. the whole movie of saw three. The whole movie revolves around the guy whose kid dies and he hangs on to the pink pig that was the pink pig was his kids. And that's the actual pink pig from the movie. Oh, no way. Um, which is very cool. And let's see. And then I have, I like, I have a bunch of cool autograph Funko Pops. So I have Gina Carano, Stan <gasps> Lee. I have um, Stan Lee. I have Harry Potter. I have. Oh, I have the Karate Kid. I mean, uh, Cobra Kai people. Um, I don't know. I have about 10 of them that are like actually like signed uh, by people. And my Stan Lee doll, which, let's see. Uh, this box is a Stan Lee, actually a Stan Lee action figure that comes all together. I've never taken it out of the box, but I bought it right before he died. So I paid like two fifty dollars for it. Now it's worth like $1,500. Oh, yeah. Easily, easily. <laughs> actually, you mentioned Cobra Kai. I had Martin Cove's son on here. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. I'm like you. I like collecting all that kind of stuff. I've got Funko Pops out the wazoo. I have a bunch. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, there they are. See them up there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what my office looks like. <laughs> there's my alien and my four-foot ninja turtle and a werewolf. And uh, there's a big Funko Pop of Batman. Uh but I have, yeah, I have both sides of the whole room and all the wall space filled Jeez. with cool stuff. I also have a, a oxygen mask uh, with blood in it that was worn by Tobin Bell and saw it's it's framed up there in a in a frame. Oh wow, that that I love that guy. Um, so you, do you know Gina Carano? No, she follows me in social media, but I don't know her. But I'm I'm trying to get her on my show. I would really like to get her on my show. Oh. So you have to to uh if you get ever get her on you gotta tell her to come to my show too <laughs> i'm a huge fan See, i didn't i actually didn't um i never even saw the mandalorian because i don't subscribe to disney so i haven't seen it um i'm really uh i align with her politically and so that's really the reason why i, I wanted to have it because i knew as soon as she got fired from the mandalorian i went everywhere because i have one of her action figures too that's not signed I, I tried to go and buy her action figure because I knew it was going to be worth a fortune, but, but they had already, the day she got fired, they went from like 25 bucks to like 300 bucks, just like that. Oh, I, um, yeah. I, believe I, me, I, was, I know. I was trying to get all of them, but, um, but I, I give her total kudos too, because her career is like still doing extremely well. And I don't, that, that's like a cancel culture. I don't believe anybody should be canceled, whether I like them or not. I don't think anybody should be canceled. No. There's a lot of people who, who have been canceled that I don't particularly like, but I, I would defend their right to be able to do whatever they want yes. to do, whether I like them or not. Yes. But the fact that she got canceled to me was just a, dis a disgrace to the industry. Yeah. Especially um, when Pedro Pascal practically said the same thing, but the, the opposite side of the fence didn't get canceled. But you know, when you're on the opposite side of the fence, you don't get canceled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I think that it's ridiculous. And so I'm, uh, a big, big, big supporter against any kind of cancel culture, no matter who it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, well, that's a rabbit hole I could go down. I could spend an hour on just a podcast about that, and I could spend an hour talking about Gina Carano. <laughs> She's gorgeous. She seems to be very nice. I mean, I was super excited when she – I have a lot of famous people who follow me on social media, Britney Spears, Tom Cruise, Barack Obama. I like a whole bunch of them follow me. Oh, wow. And so I think it's, like, very cool, but I think that, you know, everybody sh- needs to be able to say whatever they want to say, and it used to be that you could do that and – hopefully we'll get back to that again one day um and i don't even care what your politics are like if you're whatever side you're for you should be able to state your opinion on something without having to worry about like losing your career oh agreed Uh, so so i just think that it doesn't matter what side you actually line up with politically you need to you know we're built the whole we're we're built on freedom and that's not freedom then if you're going to get canceled for things like that so i'm going to get her on my show eventually because I always get everybody eventually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you might even get, you might even get me on your show one day. Who hey, knows? you never know. <laughs> you definitely could. Who are some of your favorite people that you've had on? Oh gosh, it's it's hard to say because everybody is so so different. You know, the authors and the 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 life coaches. They all everybody has something special that they bring the show. Um, I had. Uh, Cy Young on my show. Oh, that's a good one. And um, found out that we're practically neighbors. We're 10 minutes from each other. And now we kind of hang out from time to time. And, you know, he was on Broadway and his, his friend wrote Chicago and he, you know, wrote a song that Barbara Streisand recorded all these cool things. And he's an author and, uh, you know, we're actually, I'm going to hang out with him Friday. He's, join this uh like independent writers authors over in uh, ireland and they're wanting him to do a video and since i recorded him doing a performance and did an interview with him and spliced it all together we're going to edit it down this weekend um that's that's exciting and it's it's really exciting when you meet someone that uh like I, I won't mention everybody's name. I don't want to sound like I'm name dropping, but I've got musicians that I loved when I was a kid, got them on the show. And now I can call them and talk to them. And it's freaking amazing. And I have all that too. I love it. I think it's exciting. Matter of fact, we had, we had a, a guest from Ireland on two weeks ago on my show, Patrick Bergen, who um, is a huge, huge actor. He was uh, the bad guy in Sleeping with the Enemy with Julia Roberts. And oh, yeah. He, he was Robin Hood in Robin Hood. And he's got, uh, you know, hundreds of, like, phenomenal, like, credits. And he actually called us. It was the day before St. Patrick's Day in Ireland. He was in Ireland because that's where he's from. And uh, it was really, like, cool to have such an iconic person uh, on, on the show. Another really good one, if you could ever get him, is John Barrowman. I don't know. If oh, I want him. him. I want him on my show so bad. Yeah, I see him. He lives in Palm Springs. I live in Palm Springs and I see him once in a while. He was on our show and he's our highest show. We got 10 million plays on his show. Wow. Uh, He actually came on the show and we were in Pennsylvania, living in Pennsylvania when he came on our show. And as soon as the screen opened up, he was there with a big blow up doll and he was making out with a blow up doll. And that's how he opened the show for us. And it was hilarious. And people just like loved it. And he was the greatest guest. He was so much fun and he's so talented. And, you know, he's an actor and he's a singer and he does everything. And, and uh, it was just, it was he just, just fun. He sounds like he would be fun. I, I saw him at a con one time and I, I just got to say hi, but that would have been so awesome. Uh, Tommy Chong, probably one of the biggest that I've had on the show. And uh, although he doesn't smoke anymore, he had the little, thc strips that he put under his tongue so he was getting high while we're talking <laughs> no he's a good one he would be a good one i actually had to cut out part of the conversation <laughs> oh man yeah uh tommy chong i've had uh rudy sarzo for quiet riot on uh, right, we've had him i had him on uh adrian paul yeah i've had him yeah, Adrian, I met him at a con here in the Austin area. And you know you're getting old when you spend 20 or 30 minutes talking about how to, to handle arthritis. So, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't work anymore, though, in, in entertainment. He doesn't really work anymore in entertainment. He still does cons and stuff, but he's not really work, actively working in films and stuff anymore, I don't think. 
because I think I asked him to come on the show not too long ago to have like a recap, you know, since we had him on like 10 years ago. And, and he said he really wasn't acting anymore, so he didn't have anything to talk about. Oh, but he's man. very nice. He's very, very nice. The, the last thing I remember him on was Arrow. Yeah. And, but he's like really big into his sword um, class that he does in the martial arts. And he's phenomenal. He's just a phenomenal person. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun ones too. And you know, you got to have fun. I've had a lot of big music people. We've done a lot of music people. We had Earth, Wind, and Fire on. Wow. Um, I don't know. We've had a lot. It's hard to remember. All. It's hard to remember. I look around at pictures to see who I've, who I've had, had you know, on. I really like the horror people the best, though. I've had everybody from horror. Have you ever had anybody on that cracked you up so much you almost couldn't finish the, the interview? We've had a couple. Actually, uh, you know what? We've had a lot of comedians on, but comedians aren't that funny when they're not doing their stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> so I prefer not to bring comedians on anymore, but we always have a lot of people that if I can't remember recently, we had somebody on who was so witty and so funny um, that I couldn't believe it. And like next week I have, tomorrow I have um, Anna Maria Horsford, who's like in every Tyler Perry movie. She's like hilarious. She just did a Christmas movie with RuPaul um, and she's coming on. And then the next week I have all the guys from the, the dynasty, the original dynasty. Oh, wow. I have uh, John James, Jack Coleman. I forgot the other guy's name, but all three of them are coming on at one time because they're promoting a show that they're doing. And then I have Marion Ross's son coming on, who's been in a ton of things the week after that. We usually bring two people on because our show is two hours long. So we bring two people on each week. Um, but we've had some great guests. Jack O'Hallinan was a great guest. Um, Jack O'Hallinan was Superman. He was, uh, he was in Superman. He played Nan in Superman 2 with Christopher Reeve. And he's in King Kong. And, and he's also an author. And his father uh, was the head of the Gambino crime family. No. Back in the day. His father, uh, Albert Anastasia. And he's the guy who gets killed in the barbershop you know whenever you see all that mobster stuff and so he was very interesting because he was telling us how the mob basically made his career since the mob ran hollywood you know he got all these roles in these huge movies Man. Man, so he was a really good guest and which is kind of ironic because you get on got him on uh superman i don't think he had a line in the whole no, he didn't have a line. He was on. yeah he was just just the big scary guy <laughs> Uh, um, my my funniest guest was Marcus Harvey from Ghost Brothers. Oh, see, I don't even know who that is, but that's cool. Did you have to watch Ghost Brothers? That they're hilarious enough on TV, but to have him on the show, I, about 10, 15 minutes in, I had to turn and um, I had tears streaming out of my eyes because he was so funny and he kept us going the whole time. <laughs> I don't know if I could have him back on again. That's funny. <laughs> Yeah. look and see like somebody we had recently was really funny but i forgot who it was uh i make these little promos though every time uh but i don't see them so i don't know who it was but i have fun you know oh we also had uh olivia dabo on recently she was like <gasps> uh the older sister in uh wonder years i think it was or one of those shows back in the day and she's been in a million things and her father um which super impressed me it was the singer for manford man which it's a british band they sang blinded by the light yeah and uh so that she comes because i was like you know you started out so young and you didn't get all messed up with drugs and everything because now she's like 50 you know she started when she was 14 and and i said how did you navigate those waters and she said well you know when i was young i would come home from school and my dad would be like you know making music with paul mccartney or elton john or somebody she's like, i've been around celebrity my whole life so it wasn't a big deal <laughs> And I was like, holy moly, how cool is that? Manfred, man, I love that song. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I mean, it, it was originally Bruce Springsteen's, but still uh, their version was better. Yeah. And a big hit. Oh, yeah, to say the least. It, yeah, it is kind of tragic how you've got, especially some of those that start out so young that, you know, they get hooked on drugs. And then, you know, I've heard other stories, which I can't mention on here, but to see those lives, you know, you got so much entertainment from them and then to see their lives just fall apart and, and they get destroyed. It, that's, that's I've sad. Known, yeah. I've known many of them. I was friends with Corey Haim. I'm still friends with his mom. Uh, I, uh, and, uh, Brooke McCarter, uh, who was also in the lost boys. He was Paul in the lost boys, which he didn't die from an overdose. He died, died of cancer, but he had some problems with it. Um, so I've known a lot of, lot of people over my lifetime. 
mm. that have unfortunately, you know, fallen to it. And uh, it's been terrible. It's terrible. Just, well, you see them, they, they seem like they're just, uh, you know, off their rocker at one point, but you think, God, the stuff they went through, it's no wonder that they're acting this way. It's so sad, but we didn't get back on a positive note. <laughs> yes. Um, how do you sustain two hours? I'm lucky if somebody will listen to my videos for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Well, you know, I have, um, uh, so my show is live mm -hmm. and I have a co-host, so that helps because I have somebody else to help talk. Uh, I bring on two guests. I have a chat room and in my chat room, uh, there's always, you know, 50 or hundred people in the chat room and we actually talk to the chatters. Like they'll write things in the chat room and we'll mention them on the air. Um, which also helped build my show because the, the people in the chat room, then they, uh, they go out and promote because they get mentioned on the show. They love it. You know, and so I have a very loyal following that way. And so whoever's in my chat room, you know, we always mention them. We say hi to them. If they ask questions, we bring them up if, if we can and if they're appropriate. Um, and, you know, it's just fun. You know, we do, my, my, my co-host is my husband and he's hilarious. He's 81 and a half years old. He's from a different time. He's totally politically incorrect. Um, so sometimes you just have no idea what's going to come out of his mouth. You know, he'll say like the, the gosh darndest things and, uh, uh, and he doesn't care. He's like, I'm 81. I'm not going to change. You know, he comes from a totally different world, you know, you know, being 81. And so he's just funny and he doesn't give a, sh a crap. <laughs> he, doesn't care. You know, he doesn't care if he says something and people like, don't like it. He doesn't worry about it. And, uh, and that's what kind of, I think that's one reason why our show is so popular because, you know, we're not, we're not f super feeding into the whole cancel culture thing. Yeah. And uh, we just talk about whatever we want to talk. And if you like it, you watch. And if you don't like it, you know, you don't have to watch it. Nobody forces anybody to watch or listen to anything. Um, so, so that's kind of like how we do it. Does it go out on multiple platforms at the same time? Uh, when it's live on like three or four platforms at the beginning and then, uh, and then we upload it to all the platforms. So it goes out on all the platforms. Okay. Uh, after that, but we are live on, cause we use StreamYard. So StreamYard, we're live, I think on Facebook, Twitch, I don't know, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and, uh, and YouTube, I think at one time, but my chat room really just goes to, uh, uh I, I, I make everybody tell everybody to go to YouTube cause you can't see the, the comments from all of them. So I like YouTube. So everybody goes to YouTube and those are the comments that we can actually see. So we always tell everybody to go watch on YouTube. Yeah, I've I always have the hardest time getting people to commit to a certain day, a certain time to do live shows. So that's when I switched to doing recording. And but uh, I'm I'm interested if maybe I shouldn't just at least try to do one show a week live. I, I think it's a smart thing. See my show because I'm I'm I don't I'm not a self uh, produced show like you are. I actually have a network. It's in Florida that mm -hmm. I've been on for 15 years, and so. Um, I have an engineer and they do everything, you know, they just give me the link and I go in and somebody else runs the show, but I have a set time slot and I've had the same sl time slot for 15 years. So, uh, so like I'm every Wednesday at 12 o'clock. Oh, well, um, that, you know, I said, I don't, I don't know. I guess because you, you know, more people than I do. I just, it's hard for me to get people to commit at that certain time. I used to do a lot of paranormal show and to get guests every tuesday at 7 p.m central time was almost impossible oh i'm not saying it's easy um but now i've kind of like got the rep gotten a reputation you know so it's less difficult but i still have time i mean i just got one of my guests for this week which is in two days i just got her last night oh. you know so like i don't book way ahead though because i never know who i'm gonna meet like i went to an oscar event and i met some people and so you know i'll try and get them on so i don't like to book like other shows, some of them book out, you know, way out in advance. I don't do that. Uh, I don't like to book too far in advance, I, you know, unless it's a really big person who says they're going to come on. Uh, yeah. I, I like to book it only like a week or 10 days before at the most. Yeah. Doing most of this on my own is not the easiest in the world, but not, not impossible, but you know, I'm, I'm always open to tips. So I'm, I'm glad that I got to meet you. <laughs> Now, StreamYard is a great platform to do things on because you can send it to your Facebook page, your Twitter, your Instagram, and Twitch all at this. No, not Instagram. I think may, they used to do LinkedIn. I don't know if they still do, but you can set it to four places at one time. And then I don't know if you 
like do, do you uh, distribute your show like i use red circle then it distributes me to like spotify and iHeartRadio and i use and buzzsprout okay and then um uh and i like using red circle because like i i make money then on everything that gets downloaded you know they pay me for however many downloads i get which i don't make tons of money because uh because a lot of my listens are on soundcloud because when i started out i was only on soundcloud so people go to soundcloud um but i'm but it gets better every every month i make a little bit more so uh, i want to go back to you were talking about being a producer uh, how, how do you get into doing that uh you just know people <laughs> i don't know like you know, i get on social media and i'll see people i mean uh that have movies or whatever and I, a lot of times i'll just flat out ask people hey i'm a producer here's my imdb would love to work with the project you know uh, but i'm a real producer so there's two different there's different kinds of producers now in hollywood there didn't used to be but now that people do indiegogo campaigns and and all those kind of things where they crowdfund and raise money i don't do those kind of movies um because those are people who just give you money they, they pay the crowdfunder money to get a credit as a producer Mm -hmm. they don't actually know how to do it they don't actually put the movie together i'm i'm not that kind of producer i'm the kind of producer where you actually pay me to produce the film you know and you put me on a salary for the based on what the budget is and then i do all the work you know i get the cast and i get the the locations and i fill out the paperwork for sag and i do all the stuff you know that you have to do for the film so i'm an actual real producer because lots of people nowadays with all these you know, you're not a real producer if all you do is give somebody 500 bucks to get a credit on IMDb. That's not producing a film. All right. So, because I get people who come to me all the time, oh, I see you produced all these movies. You want to produce my movie, and then they send me their Indiegogo link, and I just politely say, you know, I'm not that kind of producer. If you want me to produce your film, you have to pay me. I don't pay to get a producer credit. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I see they'll they'll put producer and executive producer, and I'm like, well, I don't understand what they do executive producer comes up with the money he's the person who goes out and finds the money for everything and then the producer is the one who does like all the work mm, okay um, and a lot of times your executive producer will also have a producer credit because they'll do both you know uh, you know when it comes to the movies um i mean i'm i'm a movie buff i i love movies i love all the older movies most mostly but I see a trend coming where it seems like a lot of people are kind of falling out of love with Hollywood. Do you, do you see that? Yeah, I think it's happening a lot. And Hollywood's not the same Hollywood that it used to be. And nowadays with the all the streaming services and there's so many places, you know, that you can make movies and get them distributed to, you know, Hollywood doesn't have the same importance that it used to. Plus, Hollywood's woke. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the problem. You know, I want to watch a movie to escape the world, to have some fun, enjoy, you know, maybe I want to be, watch a sad movie or an action movie or, you know, what have you, but I understand there's got to be some sort of uh, politics to it. I mean, Star Wars, all those are be politics though. There shouldn't have to be politics to it, but it you shouldn't know, have to win an Academy Award. You know, your movie has to have a certain amount of, uh, what are they? hang on, I'll tell you what they call it. If I didn't delete it, hang on, I might've deleted it. I actually put it off, took it off of my, um, I, I posted this on, uh, on, uh, Facebook and then I took it down cause I don't want to be, uh, creating problems on Facebook, but basically like for, for a person to win an Academy award, um, the film has to have, a, uh, at least one of the lead actors or supporting actors has to be from an underrepresented racial or ethnic group. Uh, at least 30% of the actors in the secondary of the background, secondary people, not the main actors, uh, have to be minor, have to be from two of the following underrepresented groups, women, gay, people with cognitive or physical disabilities or racial or ethnic group. Um, and the storyline has to be centered on an under, underrepresented group, women, racial, gay, or people with physical disabilities. So it's not like you can just make a great movie and whoever's in it, you know, gets judged on talent. Now, if you don't have certain you know different types of minorities or, or topics that people want that that they they consider to be good your movie won't isn't even eligible for an academy award wouldn't you rather get a, a part and get an award because of your talent and instead of well that's the way it should be right I and mean, that's the way it used to be and i think eventually it'll probably go back to it because i think people will be upset with everything but it's not that way right now 
unfortunately. I, I'm disabled. Can we go make a movie together? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think the whole thing is is sad. It's actually sad. Um, and I understand that people who are underrepresented, underrepresented, you know, were underrepresented for like a long time, but they're definitely not underrepresented anymore. And you can't change history anyway. And I think that to, to make it seem like history didn't exist, you know, for whatever the agenda is, it's only going to make it happen again. You know, it's going to happen yeah. again if you actually pretend like it never happened. And the real only way to solve a problem is to acknowledge that there was a problem in the first place, not make it disappear. Yeah. Um, because I'm all for everybody should be, you know, everybody should have equal opportunities in the movies. Um, and God knows it's definitely that way now. I mean, I, I can't turn the TV on where I don't see every underrepresented class, except for gay people, every underrepresented class is, is there, you know, and I'm part of a minority. So I can say that, yeah, I'm white, but I'm also gay. <laughs> you know, and you don't see a good representation of gay people on television like ever, even when they do the commercials they'll have like two really sissy gay guys, you know, with long earrings and crazy stuff, you know, where you see gay people wearing, you know, chaps or dresses or stuff, you know, that's not the real gay community. Yeah. I live in a house, I have three dogs, I drive a BMW, I work every day, 80 hours a week. You know, there are, the majority of like gay people are just s s very strong business people, but we're not represented like that ever. And whenever we are represented, we're like represented like tutti frutti. So. So because yeah. all the time, I, if I make a comment someplace, somebody will say, yeah, but you're an old white dude. I'm like, yeah, but I'm also a gay white dude. <laughs> so I am representing a, a, a class of people that are underrepresented and I don't get all bent out of shape for it. I'm not all bent out of shape. You know, I think that you, I think it's, it would be great in Hollywood if gay people got to play gay characters, but they don't. But nowadays they probably will because the way everything's going. But I think that it doesn't matter what you do. And it doesn't matter. I don't mean just in Hollywood. I think that if you are whoever the smartest person gets the scholarship, I don't care what your race is. Exactly. You know, brains have nothing to do with your ethnic background. Uh, I think that if you're going for a job, whoever's the most qualified gets the job, not the, who, not the most qualified black person and ignore all the white people or not the most qualified Asian person or not. Whoever's the most qualified should get the job. That's how the capitalist society is built. You know, the people who work hard and go and get it. I don't believe that everybody should be equal to me and everybody should make the same money I make because I'm working 80 hours a week. You know, most people are not working 80 hours a week. I bust my ass just to survive. And I don't believe that somebody else should get things handed for free based off my hard work because I don't think it's fair. Everybody needs to put in, everybody, you reap what you sow. You know, you exactly. worked hard and now you're able to retire. Somebody else shouldn't get paid whatever you got paid for doing your job for not having to do anything. It's not fair. You know, you put in the time, the effort, uh, and you should be rewarded for the time and effort that you put in. And I think society has changed that a lot right now at this time in society. And I think that it'll go back eventually um, if we don't go broke for that. And I think that it's just ridiculous that... You know, uh, whoever's the most qualified, whoever the best actor is should get the award. Whoever the best actor was in the Academy Award, doesn't matter what their race was. If Will Smith was the best, I didn't see any of the movies, so I couldn't even tell you. Yeah, um, I didn't see it either. The, but if he was the best actor and, and he got the award, good for him. Then he deserved to get the award. But if he got the award only because he's a black actor, then I don't think he should have gotten the award. <laughs> but I couldn't even make a judgment because I haven't seen it. You know, and I didn't, you know, and I, I'm sure I'm going to like the movie that he won the award for because I was a, a competitive tennis player all through college. You know, so I know, I know the story of the Williams. Uh, uh, he's going to get an award for best slap, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, you know, from what I see, I think that that was not a good thing. Uh, um, even if it was a ploy, I mean, it's promoting violence and the fact that he didn't get arrested right off the bat. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it seemed bad to me, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, I, I'm not right about everything. From I, I, I didn't watch it live. I only saw the preview, the the after afterwards footage because I I didn't watch the Academy Awards. Um, Myself. I I didn't I didn't watch them because it's no fun watching the awards if you haven't seen any of the films. And since I had only heard of Dune and the Will Smith movie and the other movies that were up for awards, I had never even heard of any of them. And you know, I watch movies all the time, so I don't know where people saw all these movies. <laughs> Yeah, there was, I think one of them was uh, like exclusively on Apple TV or something like that. I'm like, the, the, how the rest of us supposed to watch it? <laughs> I don't know anything so about I didn't, it. Yeah, so I didn't see any of them. And I probably will watch the one that won the Coda or whatever it is about the deaf 
person or whatever like this sounds like it's a good story so i'll actually watch it um mm. but but I, and i don't really care who wins the academy awards as long as it's fair and everybody's winning based on the best ability but i know it's very political you know and and there's an agenda behind everything that happens and so uh, unfortunately, that's why I believe going back to how we started this conversation, you know, I think that Hollywood doesn't have the, the most isn't so significant and important anymore because of that, you know, because yeah. they're not, because they're not being, you know, being, they're not being fair and it's not equal representation for everybody. Uh, I think you should get a job because of your skills, just the same as I don't think you should you know, keep somebody from getting a job because of X, Y, Z. Oh, no, absolutely. Whoever's, whoever, whoever deserves a job should get the job. Whoever's got the skills uh, to get the job. And then and if you have two people and let's say they're two different ethnicities and they both have the same qualifications, 100% equal, well, then the, in my head, the next step would be who interviewed the best, who's got the best social skills, who mm -hmm. can speak, who can do it. And that's the person who should get it. And it doesn't matter doesn't matter what your ethnicity is like whoever's the most qualified who who puts together the best package uh, and represents them themselves the best that's the person who should get the job because that's you know that's how, how this country was built you know, you know I, I'm upset about how the country was built you know and nobody wants to talk about any of the ways that it was built but that's how that's how it was built you can't change it so well, i mean that's the way the world is i mean that's, that's right. happened everywhere so it's not like we're the only ones right uh, um you know, one person that I interviewed that I really admired was uh, Wesley Year, and you know, Great guy. I, he is such an awesome person. He's I can send him an email and he answers me all the time. But he, one thing he said that he didn't want to focus on was the fact that he was gay. He's like, you know, his work, you know, being on the what was it, Young and the Restless, and Land of the, Land of the Lost, and you know, creating dragon tales and all these other wonderful things that he's doing his, his writing and everything. And I'm like, wow, this guy is pretty cool. You know, it's like, Hey, don't Very focus cool. on that. Focus on what I've done. We actually did a, something that I think will come out this year. We did a radio drama called dead exit. And it's like a utopian society in like 50 years away from now type, but it's a radio drama instead of a movie. And, and uh, we're both in that as characters. Oh, so no way. It'll come out later this year, I think. And there's a whole bunch of really cool people that are in it. Um, but he's definitely, he's one of the people in it because uh, I got brought on and I, I, they asked me who do I knew. And so I brought a bunch of famous people that I knew, got them all involved. And so he, I know him. And so he got involved and he's a great guy. He lives here in Palm Springs. Yeah, and he, yeah, he was, he was an inspiration because he's like, hey, look at, take me on my merits, not on, you know, the fact that I'm gay, that, and I, See, I like that too i think that way too like the fact that i'm gay just happens to be like the fact that you're straight it doesn't nobody introduces straight people as this is my straight friend well, this is thank you this is straight businessman or straight bot podcaster or straight water department person or whatever the heck you know right so why do i so i shouldn't have to be identified that way either i'm a producer i'm a talk show host i'm a publicist i'm not a gay producer a gay talk show host a gay publicist you know the gay doesn't have anything to do with it Exactly. You know, whatsoever it just happens to be you know a part of me the same way straight but they don't label straight people i don't think they should label gay people either nope and i've talked i've talked to, about that with my kids is that i mean if it comes up in a conversation i'll say yes i my, my sons are gay but i don't go out and say oh this is my gay son this is my gay son and I, i've taught them to to work hard to get where they want to get and not you know, because they're they're half Hispanic and they're both gay. That could, you know, oh, you you give me this job or you're prejudiced against me. No, my son's busted his both of them busted their butts going to school and getting degrees and getting good jobs. And I think that's that's what was important. Look at the work they did. That's right. And that's the way it should be. I think that's the way it should be for everything. And I think that eventually the world will go back to that. We're not there right now. You know, because everybody wants everything for free without having to do anything, but the world can't sustain itself that way. So eventually it'll, it'll, I think it will go back to being, you know, work hard, live the American dream, live the American dream. You have to work hard to get the American dream. It's not just handed to you, you know, and, and I mm -hmm. think it'll go back to there. It might take a little while, but, but I think it'll eventually go back.
Well, look at our generation. Okay, we were um, just young enough, or just old enough, excuse me, to know, you know, the hardships that our parents, grandparents went through, and and the sacrifices they had to make, and, and to work hard. And I mean, I had summer jobs. I, I worked for my dad at one point during the summer to get things that I wanted. And then we we're young enough that we got to see all this new technology come in and the great things it can do. But what have we done to our children? You know, with uh, I don't know if you've seen the Jeff Foxworthy uh, comedy special, but he was talking about the uh, our participation trophies. You know, used to you if you won, you got a trophy. If you didn't, you saw somebody else get a trophy. But that's our generation's fault because we allowed that to happen or we participated in it. I didn't because I don't have kids, but I don't think people should get a they could get a certificate for participating, but you don't get a trophy. The winner gets the trophy. First Thank place, you. Place, maybe first place depends on what it is. I was a tennis player, a very competitive tennis player growing up. And and uh, I I had all kinds of in tennis, they call it the winner and the runner up. Mm -hmm. and I had a ton of winner trophies and I had a ton of runner up and I had a ton of tournaments I played in where I got my ass kicked and I got shit. <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and that's just the way it is. But like to give somebody something so they don't feel bad, you know, the, to give them a trophy is absolutely ridiculous. And I don't know how these people are going to compete in the world. You know, you go out into the job and no matter what you want to do, even if you're going to be a garbage man, somebody's the head garbage man and that's going to yep. be the person who works the hardest. So it doesn't matter what you do for a living. You know, I always use like attorneys, you know, because I, I, I think I would have liked to have been an attorney. Uh, and I think, you know, you have all these people who work in a lawyer's office and everybody's striving to make partner, but it's very competitive. It's a very competitive atmosphere. And, you know, and the people who work the hardest are the ones who hopefully are going to like, you know, get, get to that point. But you don't, nobody gives you, it's like a job. Nobody like, you go to a job and you sit there and don't do anybody. Nobody pays you to just show up. Mm -hmm. And nobody right. needs anybody to just show up, you know, and that's not the world. That's not how the world is built. And the world can't afford to pay people to, to not do anything. That's very true. I mean, I didn't teach my kids to, you know, you get a participation trophy or you just get given stuff. I mean, I'll, obviously, uh, you know, I screwed up giving them cell phones when they're old enough to have them. But, you know, for the most part, my kids did chores and, and all that kind of stuff. And I got an allowance when I was growing up. When I, I got $5 a week for an allowance. And uh, and I had to mow the lawn and I had to mm -hmm. do my own laundry and I had to do the dishes every night. And, uh, you know, I had to like work for that. I didn't just, they didn't just give me $5 because I was their son. I had to actually do stuff for it. And that's the way things should. Maybe that's why, though, I have a, a good work ethic because I literally, I'm working all the time. Yeah. And I enjoy working, but also I also know that if I don't work hard, I, you know, I can't pay my bills. <laughs> well, I can't say that I gave my kids an allowance, but if they wanted money or something like that, I'd make them do chores for it. And I think it, that's the problem is parents got away from that. Personally, I don't know any parents that just let their kids do that. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I grew up. And the, I mean, the people that I grew up around, they were, they did the same things I did. And then when I saw them later on after they had kids, you know, they made their kids work for stuff. So I don't get where the hell are these kids coming from. When I was 10, my dad bought me a lawnmower and he said, you want to make money? You know how to mow lawns, go out and mow lawns. And I would pull it on my bike and go door to door and ask people if I could mow their lawns. And that's mm -hmm. how I made money. And, uh, I can remember because I had one lady and she paid me two fifty an hour and I thought, oh my God, that's so great. You know, and I had to work for two hours. She was like, it has to take you two hours. You have to work for two hours and I'll give you $5. And every two weeks I went and made $5 and I was 10 years old. You know, that's a lot of money when you're 10. Oh yeah. And I had a paper route and I used to get up when I was in seventh grade, which is about 12 probably. I would like get up at 4.30 in the morning every day of the week and I would ride my bike and pick up my papers and, and bag them all and go and deliver all my papers and I made like a hundred dollars a month at 12 years old. And like, it was a lot of money, you know, but like my, yeah. but because my parents didn't give me any money, they would buy me school shoes, but only like would buy me Bobo's. So like, if I wanted like Nikes or something like a real brand, I had to pay for it myself. Cause they were like, I'm not spending all that money. If I wanted a regular shirt, just a knit shirt, but I always wanted the Izod shirts with a little, with a little alligator on them. They were like, <laughs> if you want those, you have to buy those yourself. And so I would go to work so I could buy my own 
clothes of the things I wanted, you mm-hmm. know, to wear. And, and, you know, and to this day, I still do the same thing. So I think that, that people don't have the same, we don't have the same morals, but they don't have, there's no work ethic now. Yeah. Everybody expects everything to come. You know, I see all kinds of people. I work as a publicist and I've worked with people who, who maybe they, they had some kind of brush with fame, you know, and then they'll be like, they'll hire me and they're like, how come you didn't get me invited to the Academy Awards or how come you didn't get me on Good Morning America or, or something like that? I'm like, like, nobody knows who you are. You're like, you know, you're like on a reality show and you sang a song and got eliminated in two weeks. Like nobody knows who you are. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you don't have any money. Are you kidding me? You want to go to the Oscars? I can probably get you a ticket. You got, I don't know, two or $300,000 to spend for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you want to be on, you want to be in Ro- or a musician or they'd be like, oh, I want to like, you know, how come you can't get me in Rolling Stone? I'll be like, well, it's 25 grand to have a little blur put in the online thing. You know, you got 25 grand to pay for it because you haven't earned the accolades for them to put you in there for any other reason. You know, you, you know, it takes years to get those things and everybody wants everything now from the now generation. And, and I don't come from that generation. I mean, it took me 15 years for my podcast to be, you know, considered successful. Right. Well, I mean, it doesn't sound like you have the victimhood mentality, but do you feel like maybe because of your beliefs and your attitude that it makes it harder for you in Hollywood? Um, no, I don't. I think that, uh, you know, I'm a creator. So like I, I create a lot of my own projects. Like I find the, the, the scripts, I go out and find the money. I go out and find the cast and I make the movies and stuff. So I'm not dependent on other people to give me a job. Mm-hmm. I don't ever depend on other people to give me a job. Um, I think I'm, uh, I'm not super vocal about everything that goes on in Hollywood. I just say, I don't like cancel culture. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, I, I get brought on to a lot of projects, not, not because of that, just because they know, I know what, what to do. You know, people know that I know how to do things and I, I know what to do. Um, so I think that, you know, I never have a victim mentality anyway. I mean, it's not like everything's been peachy and wonderful for me. Of course. You know, I had a, I had a, a building in a corrupt, corrupt democratic government eminent domain my property many years ago in Florida. I had an old hotel. I had, uh, I had $4 million invested in it. They gave me 900000 left me with $3 million worth of debt, and I lost oh everything. God. I lost my house. I lost my car. I lost everything. I lost it. I was like almost homeless. And, uh, and I had to start all over again. And I was in my, I was in my like mid, mid to late forties and I lost everything. I lost my entire savings and anything I had ever worked for my whole life. And I couldn't get any help from anybody. And, uh, and I think that's why sometimes I'm bitter because like uh, I was in a group that, that couldn't get any kind of help or any kind of financial assistance. And I had to fend for myself. And yet I never begged or asked anybody for a penny. You know, I had one point for like two years, I worked three jobs a day. I slept like two hours a day and I had one day off that I didn't do anything to catch up on the sleep. But I think uh, I, I worked incredibly hard. You know, I worked at a shoe store. I worked as an undercover security guard at a Barnes and Noble. And at night I drove security around like a high expensive neighborhood. I drove a little security card around, you know, to make sure everybody. So I was like working like all the time just to survive. Yeah. Nobody ever helped me. And. And I think that, you know, so I'm not super lenient about like all the like homeless people and people who don't have jobs and all these things. There's jobs out there. If you need them, you can find them if you're not afraid to work and you're not afraid to maybe take a job that you think is beneath you. Um, you know, when you're starving and you don't have any food, there's no, not, no job is beneath you. Oh, no, that's right. Um, you know, I have a, a family. I have, I have a family. I have things to support. I can remember a friend who I won't announce when I lived in Florida. Uh, but when I lived in Florida, I was pretty popular. You know, I was in every movie set, you know, working all the time. And then after the government eminent domain my property and I lost everything, I was a big time clothing designer then. And, uh, and this girl, I was working at a Johnson and Murphy shoe store. And the girl came in and she was like, oh my God, the great Jimmy Starr. And she had just written on her Facebook page, I'm starving, my roommate won't give me a potato and I have nothing to eat which I would never write that. Even if that was true, I would never write that. So she, right. came, she came into to the store that I was working at. She's like, oh my God, the great Jimmy Starr working at a shoe store. What are you doing here? And I just flatly said, well, I can't go on Facebook and write that I'm starving. I don't have a potato and nobody will give me anything to eat. 
you know, I have to actually like work and support myself. And, and she was super like offended. And I was like, well, that's the way it is, you know, like I don't ask for handouts. Nobody's ever given me a nickel and, and I'm proud of that. And I've, and, and I don't live a privileged life. I mean, I've lost every, I lost everything. Like, you know, how embarrassing it is when like, they come and when you see the car company people come up and repossess your car in front of your house and then they kick you out of your house because you couldn't pay the mortgage it's very yep. it's very um it's very humiliating and it's very but it, uh, but i didn't sit around and crying i went out and got jobs until i you know built myself back up to the point where now i'm you know okay again um but i think that that's the way that's the problem with the world today everybody wants everything for nothing and nobody's willing to work for anything and and society is too quick to cancel people. You know, I just mm -hmm. think it's super unfortunate. And again, I want to reiterate, I don't mean cancel culture for anybody. I don't care who you are. You don't deserve yeah. to be canceled. Okay? I agree. Like, I'm not a big fan of Kathy Griffin because I think she's done some terrible things. But then that when they tried to cancel her, I don't think she should be canceled, even though I don't like her. I don't, I don't think anybody should be canceled. You get to say what you want to say if you do something that's in poor taste like she did or like chris rock you know i guess last night at the academy awards i guess what he did was in poor taste um but he shouldn't be canceled for it because that's just the way it is and especially when you're a comedian comedians make fun of everybody you know it's equal yeah. opportunity making fun of so i don't think anybody should be canceled for no matter what they do if they do something really wrong it wouldn't hurt to maybe say hey i made a mistake and i apologize but i don't think people should be canceled because they make a mistake everybody makes mistakes everybody i don't there's not a person on this planet who doesn't make a mistake agreed agreed you know um so but i think that you know because people always will say to me like i don't know i i guess because i like come across i'm not i'm not arrogant but i come across as confident um but everybody thinks you know because i haven't told a million a tons of people you know that i lost everything and i had to start all over again but people just assume that i'm somehow from like a wealthy background they don't know that the, the in, in any of the backs you know the reason i traveled all over the world is because it was free it didn't cost us anything <laughs> my dad got free hotel rooms and we got free flights so yes I've, I've been very fortunate and blessed that i've traveled all over the world but i didn't have to pay for it and if i would have had to pay for it i wouldn't have been able to do it um and and that's just the same way things are now like i because of my success of my podcast and who I am, like I go to red carpets and parties and stuff all the time here in Hollywood, but I don't, you know, the tickets are hundreds of dollars. I don't pay. I get invited as a celebrity guest and I go, if I had to pay for it, I wouldn't be able to go because I wouldn't be able to afford it. You know, um, that's just the way it is. But, but uh, I think that everybody needs to work hard. Everybody needs to have a good time. Everybody needs to lighten up and just let a joke be a joke. Yeah. You know, or that. If you don't like it, or if you don't like something that somebody says, like I don't ever go on Facebook, ever. When I see, I see a lot of things I don't agree with on Facebook. Well, of course. I don't ever write comments on any of it. If it's, it's somebody else's page and that's what they think, I don't feel the need that I need to go on there and start a fight with them because I think differently. It's their page. Let them write whatever they want. And mm -hmm. then when I put something on my page, if somebody doesn't like it and starts run, writing negative stuff, I delete all those comments because my page isn't for negativity. My page is about, hey, let's have a good time and this is all positive stuff and and, you know, I post a lot of fun memes and things like that, but I don't want people to come on my page and write, you know, you're wrong and this person's an idiot or this person's terrible. Or you don't know what you're talking about. I don't want fights on my Facebook page. I heard that. I my Facebook page to be fun. And if you don't like it, you know, you don't need to stop on everybody's page when you see something that, they, that you don't like and, and start a fight or give your opinion. Nobody asked you for your opinion. <laughs> that, that's true. That's true. I mean, there are some that do come out and they post stuff and they, they want you to accept their, their view or whatever. And then when you don't, then they say, well, I don't, I don't need you in my life. Then why'd you put your life out there? That's right. You know, and I don't need, I don't need anybody to accept with my, I put my things out because it's like for me to put out nobody else. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I mean, it, it, I'm, I get where you're coming from. It's just some of these folks that they they want to announce the world that they're i don't know i saw one this dad had his daughter on tiktok i don't even think she was in junior high yet and she was announcing that she was a boy now or something and you know people are like what why you know well, we don't need you all up in our business then why are you putting your business out there and why are you exploiting your child like that you see i don't i personally don't agree with it um and it's 
a lot of times touchy for me because I'm part of the LGBTQ community. Um, but like that lady who won the swimming thing. Yes, oh yeah. Swimming thing. Who's actually a dude. He still has a penis. You're a dude. <laughs> and it's, and I, and, and, and I, again, see, I can speak from experience because I was a competitive tennis player and I know that, that males and females cannot compete. I used to play practice with uh, Bonnie Gadusak and Kathy Rinaldi in the tennis world. They were the top 10 women's tennis players, like behind Chris Evern and Martina Navratilova. They were in the top 10 and I would beat them every time I played with them. And here I was just a guy, kid in high school, a guy, but I'm a guy. Mm -hmm. So you cannot compete. Um, and so the fact that you've got dudes competing in women's sports to me is just, it's a disgrace. It's not okay. Uh, I agree. It's, okay. um, it's just not okay. Just like it's not okay for me to have in Florida, they got all upset for the don't say gay bill or whatever it was. Which like it doesn't kids, even say that. <laughs> no, it doesn't say that. But when your kids are between three and eight, they don't need to know about gay people and transsexuals and all that stuff. Like they need to learn about castles and Santa Claus and, and like mm -hmm. things that three to eight year olds need to know, you know, if you're kids, be kids 12 or 12 or 13 or 14, maybe they're getting a little older, you know, they can understand it, but kids in elementary school don't need to know that stuff. They don't need to have transgendered bathrooms. They don't need any of that stuff. Cool. And I think it's ridiculous. Most it's of them ridiculous. don't even know what that is unless you tell them. Right. And they don't need to, I don't think it's my personal opinion that they don't need to know that. And anybody who, who, cause on Facebook, everybody's so up in arms about it. And, on a lot of the gay gay community is up in arms in it, but I think that they're incorrect. I think it's just not, you know, I didn't know anything about gay. I was probably like, and I realize I'm old and I'm from a different generation, but I was probably 15 when I first like knew what gay was, um, you know, but I definitely wouldn't want to know about it at three. And I don't think there's any reason why a three-year-old kid needs to know anything about sexual orientation. Uh, they it doesn't don't... make any sense. I wouldn't even talk to him about straight sex at that age. You yeah, know what I mean? No, so it's just ridiculous. The world's just crazy. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, they get to be 12 or 13 and their bodies are starting to change. Yeah, well, then, they, then you can have a conversation. Yeah, but that should be a parent's decision, That's I think. That's right, not a school decision. Absolutely. I think no. so. I had no problem with the sex education we got when we, I think we're, I was uh, – Eighth grade. I think. I think I was a junior in high school before we okay. did that. I think I got an eighth grade. But it was how to take care of your body and, you know, to, to you know, be careful, that kind of stuff. And, you know, they they didn't get into, you know, stuff you don't need to get into with kids. They just gave you the straight facts that, you know, this is this, this is this, you know. And I think that's what it should be. But that's just my opinion as well. This is very nice. I don't really talk openly about any of these things all that often. And I think uh, it's fun and it's very relaxing. And it's just, hey, everybody listening and tuning in, it's just my opinion. And, and you get to have your opinion, too. And if you don't agree right. with mine, I'm OK with that, too, because you don't have to agree with me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody gets to be who they are and, and, and like and dislike whatever they like. So this is just my my point of view. Just because I'm not into it doesn't mean that I'm going to not like you because you are into it. Absolutely. I have a ton of friends that are Democrats and I have a ton of friends that are Republicans and I don't really care either way. If you're my friend, you're my friend. And yeah. I think it's ridiculous, though, for people who like I have I used to have some friends that said, if you're a Republican. Just unfriend me because we have nothing in common. And I'm talking about people I've been friends with for 15, 20 years. Yeah. And, and they're like, you know, and I think things like that are crazy and immature and, you know, it's incorrect. I mean, if you're my friend, you're my friend. I don't care what your political beliefs are. Um, I, I don't really care about any any of the stuff unless you're doing stuff that hurts people or kills people or rapes people or I mean, unless you're like a child molester or something like I have no problem, you know, with you that's being true. different than me. If you're different than me, you're different than me. And that's just the way it is. Well, real quick, before we wrap up, do you have some links that you can share with us? Sure. So I'm a blogger. Also, I have a cool blog and it also has all my information, all my sites. It's jimmystarsworld.com. I'm number 40 of the top 100 celebrity entertainment blogs in the world. So check it out. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Dr. Jimmy Star, Dr. Jimmy Star. Um, and I'm Jimmy Star Official on Instagram and Getter. And I'm just, you know, and I'm Star Jimmy on Facebook because I got hacked and I couldn't get Jimmy Star. So because he's still out there. And so it's Star Jimmy on uh, Facebook. So Star if look, Jimmy. If you go to Jimmy Star, that won't be the right one on Facebook. And that guy's still impersonating me and asking people for money eight months later because Facebook told me that. I can't prove that that that's not that 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 guy stole my identity. 
<laughs> well, I appreciate your time. Hopefully we can collaborate again in the future. And Absolutely. Uh, you have my email. Uh, and any time you need any help with anything, please let me know. I'm always around to help. I will definitely do that. If you could send me those links, I'll, I'll be glad to share those out. And Absolutely. Uh, to everyone out there, if you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. Please subscribe. If you're regular to the channel, thank you for your support. It's because of you. We do what we do. So until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network. 